So the 2020s decade is the decade of full fibre and the industry knows very well that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to build full fibre networks throughout the UK and gain market share. Uh, now Zen has chosen to partner with City Fibre, City Fibre head and shoulders above all the other Altnets in terms of the scale of its build, the scale of its ambition. So we've made a big commitment to City Fibre and I'm absolutely delighted today to have the founder and CEO of City Fibre, Greg Mesh, with me. Thank you, Richard. So, Greg, a very warm welcome to Rochdale, a very warm welcome to our HQ building. Yeah, thank you. It's great to come up here. It's just, we, we obviously are building out Rochdale also and so to see our our, our own team start to dig up the roads and put the fexes in is always a is a great start to a city. So, so your published ambition: eight million homes passed. So, how far you are, are you on that journey? Today? About about twenty five percent done, which is really kind of amazing considering you know the city fiber kind of started the whole fiber to the home charge across the UK. Um, we set an ambition for eight million. Um, we've just gone across the 2 million mark, so that's 25%. We're building at a rate of around 1.5 million a year now. So we should we should push right up over that 3, three million, 3.5 three million mark by the end of next year. And we'll be finishing up the 8 million right around the 2025 period. So we're, we're, we're delighted with where we are today. Yeah, fantastic. And in terms of the service itself, one thing that sets City Fibre apart from all the competition at, at the moment is the symmetric service. So it's not just a gigabit Correct. Down, download, it's a gigabit upload as well. But I believe that even with a gigabit, you, you're not resting on your laurels no, there. You've got no. bigger plans for even well, faster speeds we, in the future. We, what can you tell us about that? Well, we always felt like and designed for an ultimate fiber plant and what it would look like for the next hundred years because this type of infrastructure is once in a generation it's going to be here for um, the next hundred years roughly we we think and the ducts and the tubing under the ground can be reused and reused but your fiber plant needs to be designed in a certain way so we designed our fiber plant roll out to be full city based so we come across cities so we not only do consumers we do businesses we do uh, public sector schools hospitals all of that as well as cell sites and mobile phone so having that architecture means we had to kind of built and design the city a certain way but it also meant that we needed to think of the evolution of fiber technologies and that we think is XGS PON, which is software defined optical layers, which is really cool stuff if you're geeky because it goes back to the original days of like packet switching networks where you first had packet switching networks, then you had X.25, and then you moved into IP protocol and that's the whole world is based around IP protocol. We think the same thing is going on on the optical layer. First it was about splitting your fibers and then it was about giving a fiber so much of a split to each user. Now it's about how to modulate the optical layer. So we're, we're moving all the way to XGS PON. And the reason we're doing that is we think we'll go from one gig to two gig to five gig to 10 gig over the next several years. So that our base products will be series of gigs products, not up to 100 megs, not up to 500 megs. It'll be a gig is your base product. And then if you want two gigs, five gigs and 10 gigs, you'll be after that. We think, if you think of the evolution of the whole internet, it's only 20 years old, because we go back 20 years ago, it wasn't even here, roughly. Just think of where it's going to be in the next 20 years. So, so that's why we think putting the right infrastructure down and then really thinking about the right technology is important. What about funding? So I, I believe you've raised a, a, a bewildering $4 billion pounds is that right so, to well we've been, raised a little more than okay. that we actually raised well, we raised 1.25 billion in equity and then we raised 4.9 billion in debt so you any way you add that up it's closer to 6 billion pounds of financing and we did that in the 21 22 period before um, the shift in the financial markets so i would like to think it's uh, brilliance but i think it's luck and most of the luck is that we moved really quick. And we move quick. We 
think about s- speed and the speed of our execution is one of our weapons that we use because we, we should be the challenger and the challengers move quicker, and react quicker. So we, we knew that capital was going to be your really success or failure could be as much dependent on your capital as anything else. So we moved to capitalize ourselves fully as fast as we could. Then now we've been working on, on, on getting our construction partners and getting every, everybody up to that speed. But yes, we're, we're in a very, very good spot right now where we're fully financed for our entire 8 million rollout. Fantastic. And do you have any concerns at all about, uh, about having so much debt with the financial markets as they are? Or, or, or are, you, are you sort of comfortable that the way you've structured it means that you can, you can finish the 8 million bill? Yeah, well, plan? We, well, because it's such a large amount of capital that was raised and the way it was all, I mean, our owners are, are Goldman Sachs and Anton and Mobadala. They're, they're world-class uh, infrastructure investors. And the way the debt was all worked, it was all hedged and the interest rates were hedged. So we're in really good shape with our debt packages and, and our debt packages funds pretty much all the, all the, all of the connections. So we can never really get ourselves even in trouble with debt because it's all based on how many connections we get and it is services. And of course, clearly a model like ourselves is so much different because we're 95% gross margin based. Mm-hmm. So all of our our revenues, so to speak, ours is free cash flow that can go to cover that. So um, we're in a good spot. We're in a really good spot. Well, that's great to know since Zen has committed its long-term future to, <laughs> to Sissy Fiber. Well, we're committed together. <laughs> yeah, we are indeed. We are we're indeed. committed together. And um, now... One thing be interesting, obviously, there's lots of alt nets out there. I think there's a list of a hundred on ISP review yeah. of, you know, most of them really quite small players, some bigger ones, and um, and there's been quite some coverage in the press. I did a presentation at yep. the London Internet Exchange last year, saying, look, you know, there's far more people building than there are customers here to build to what's going to happen to the market. I'd be really interested in your view on what's going to happen to these 100 alt nets uh, over the next five plus years. That's a really great question. I I think, I mean, from our standpoint, we're really not even an alt net anymore, right? Because our size and scope is so much bigger. Um, um, I mean, we're the second largest fiber plant now in the UK. So BT's first, City Fiber's next, and, and we're you know, quite a ways ahead of Virgin on any of their fiber deployment. So we think we'll always be the second largest fiber plant. Now, the thing is, City Fiber was based on acquisitions, and it was based on acquisitions of fiber. And what I did is, in all of our, we're 11 and a half years old, so all of our early days was buying other people's fiber and putting it into our network architecture and putting our product set on top of it. So we're seasoned in how we could integrate um, or consolidate more fiber providers. The key thing to us, though, from City Fiber's perspective, is that there, out of the 100, there's probably only 20 that really are 90% or 95% of all the properties out there. So there's only 20. And those 20 are valuable to us or to the industry if they're not duplicating on top of us or we're not duplicating on top of them. So the most important thing is to sequence where everybody's building today and then put an architecture in place, physical architecture, like the pond ports you use or the fiber ports you use, or you're even active layer. So if you're using Cisco or, or Juniper or whatever, having the physical infrastructure as well as the active infrastructure in a standards-based system, then I can integrate it into our systems very quickly, or we could bring our wholesale platform across them. So I think the first stage of let's say, consolidation that'll take place is that we'll begin to working together. So I can have an alt-net retail come across our footprint. We can take our wholesale platform across their footprint. Now, whether or not we want to acquire them or they want to be merged with us, that's another secondary equation. Um, But we would, I think in this industry, there would probably be only one natural consolidator and it's probably City Fiber. One, it has the experience doing it, but it's also a challenger that's just pure fiber. So if there's somebody else out there building just pure fiber, then we're 
we're probably almost 50, 60 percent the same anyway. Yeah. So. Really exciting time in the market, I think. I, I mean, you said it's once in a generation, and I, I absolutely agree with that. I think so. Yeah. We've gone through dial up, we've gone through ADSL, we've gone through fiber to the cabinet. This is full fiber, but I think the big difference with full fiber compared with all the previous generations of technology is once you've got that fiber to the end customer, you don't need any more infrastructure. Correct. You know, it, you can go to, you can continue to upgrade forever <laughs> well what we like to say once the optics is in the house then you've got line of sight to everything because you've got you're really modulating light waves now so we can go wherever we want yeah and there's all this talk about the meta right the meta is not going to arrive in anybody's house until you get full fiber with super high speeds. so so it's the enabling we think the final enabling technology to unleashing the internet for everybody's for good, for, for, for its value is to get full fiber out. Everywhere. Yeah, fantastic. So last question actually is more to do with the, the new world of hybrid working, actually. Yeah. Uh, as Almost. a result of the pandemic, this new world of work has been thrust upon us. And I just wonder, Greg, what's your own personal view and what's City Fiber's view of home working, office working, hybrid working, does it work, does yeah. it not work, yeah, what do you think? That's a great question, isn't it, right now for any, any uh, I mean, I mean that, that you, you asked two questions, personal view and city fiber view. So city fiber is officially a hybrid working environment. Now there's a couple of reasons why city fiber is officially a hybrid environment. Number one is we were always pretty high, uh, agile and hybrid before the pandemic hit. To put it in context, when the pandemic hit, we had 600 employees. At the end of the pandemic, we had 2,000. Right. Wow. So over the course of two years, we went from 600 to 2,000 employees. We didn't have any office desks for them to sit on. <laughs> we didn't really have any office space. So we are agile by design because we did not increase our footprint from the beginning of the pandemic to the end. So that just shows you that agility does work. Hybrid does work. Now, that's City Fiber's official. My personal view is that we need to get our young and early entrants back to the office. And the reason is, is that it's the young kids first entering into the work environment mm -hmm. that they really benefit from sitting around next to peers and their associates. It's not the people that have been working in the office for 20 years. They can work from home. They've already developed a peer network. But what we, we think, even I guess City Fiber as well as Greg, Greg Mesh personally is the CEO. We think the, 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 the thing that a company must do, it's probably paramount to anything, is give the future generations opportunity. And you can't do that if they're sitting at home in a terrible environment with poor lighting and they're trying to experience your company through the lens of a PC. Mm. They experience the feel of a company just like yours, your feel, and City Fiber has a feel. They feel it by being absorbed in that culture around the coffee machines, going out to lunch with their compatriots. And that's where they learn about the values of a company. Mm. So, so I'm, I'm a thrill for agile working as a peer methodology and as a discipline, but I'm not a believer that it substitutes for um, collaboration and in-person collaboration, particularly for the recent graduates or new joiners and companies. Mm. It, certain, it certainly reflects the feedback and experience we've had at Zen, where we've got about 550 people and we found a lot of people choose to work from home. Some people choose to work from the office. A lot of people do the hybrid thing. And But to cut out the office altogether, I mean, there are a lot of advantages of being in the office, like you say, for new joiners to the business and also people that have been here for a while to get those, you know, get those ad hoc meetings, those water cooler chats, that collaboration that you just can't get I when, agree. You're, when you're sat at home viewing the world through a little square I agree. like you're in some sort of space and, capsule. And, <laughs> and, and they miss that opportunity to walk right up to the CEO in the hallway and complain about something. <laughs> <laughs> And I and the only way that we realize how to make our things better is when you have really, I think, ad hoc conversation. Yeah. Because that's when people let down their guard and they explain what's really going on. Formal communications re re results in a little more formal process being given to things that are common sense sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Look, 
Massive thanks, Greg. You're welcome for Richard. doing this short um, video interview with me. And uh, I'm and, and welcome to our next years of journeys. Yeah, yeah, and, and also a, a a big thanks for the partnership and for building Rochdale. I mean, it's not too long ago that we were exchanging emails and talking, and and you said we could build Rochdale and look, here we are. We've just visited the fiber exchange in Rochdale and it's well underway, so. Yeah, I, th I really, I really, really, really passionately th love that because you take a small community like Rochdale and you can put a 30 million investment in and it can change the lives of everybody here yeah. for the better. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Greg. You're welcome, Richard. Thank you.